Hello, I'm Jim Kearns, and welcome to Lawrence Tech EGE 2013, our statics examples, uh, with another one in our series. In this uh, example, I'm going to look at this distributed load here that we have on some fictitious beam, and we're going to resolve that into a single force that we can use to determine the reactions at various points. Okay, and I'm going to also uh, probably use this very same example for um, determining the internal forces inside that beam at, on a later video. So here's our load distribution um, from, from 0 to 10 meters. Uh, it has a magnitude of 20 newtons. And then at 10 meters, between 10 meters and 15 meters, it uh, tapers off linearly down to zero. So we can take this force and we can divide it into two parts. We can divide it into a rectangular section and we can divide it into a triangular section. Those are simple geometric shapes that we can easily find an effective single force for uh, using the table or the illustrations in the back of our textbook or any other resource that you may have that lets you find the centroid of geometric objects. And then once we found those two individual forces, we can combine them into one. Let's start. I'm going to start out by looking at this section right here, the rectangular section. I see that it has a length of 10 meters and a height of 20 newtons. So I can come up with the total force by inspection. Really, I can say that uh, 10 meters times 20 newtons per meter. I said newtons before. It's really the it's newtons per meter is our load distribution. So 10, and that gives us a 200 newton force. And it's a rectangle, so we know that the centroid of that rectangle is right smack dab in the middle. So here at 5 meters, we have a force of 200 newtons equivalent. Now we can look at the triangle. That's not a lot more difficult. Um, our height of the triangle is, tw again, 20 newtons per meter. The base of our triangle is the difference between 10 and 15 is 5. So the area of a triangle is 1 half our base, which is 5 meters times our height, which is 20 newtons per meter. And that gives us um, a total force of 50 newtons. And looking in the table in the back, we find that the centroid is equal to one at located at one third the distance of this total distance. Measuring from the left edge of the triangle, this is just this distance here to be five thirds meters. Now the next step is to simply find those into a single force. Now what we know is that uh, if we were to take the moment of the two forces about some point, like our origin O here, and we um, find the sum of the moments of the two forces, then the sum of the, the moment from the combined force would have to be equal. So I'm going to say that the sum of the moments about zero is equal to the moment of our resultant force about zero. And that's simply our 200 newtons times the five meters uh, plus our 50 newtons times, well, I've got, I've got 10 meters right there. And then I have another five thirds meters. And that is equal, going to be equal to the resultant, the moment from our resultant force, which has a magnitude of 250 uh, newtons at some unknown distance d. And then I can just rearrange that equation a little bit. And I get my uh, total moment is 
0.33 divided by the 250 newtons of our resultant. This is newton meters, this is newtons, and I'm left with meters, and it's 6.33 meters. So if I erase all those, I get a final resultant single force located at 6.33, and it has a magnitude of 250 newtons. Okay? Given that single force, it's it's going to be fairly straightforward to find the reaction forces here. Uh, I'll draw in an X direction reaction force just for completeness. And here, where it's only in the Y direction, uh, we can find those fairly straightforward as long as we're here because we'll be using this uh, example again in a later video. So we'll do this part right here. We can see by inspection that the X component of the reaction force is zero. There is no X direction forces on it or horizontal forces. But to find my reaction, I label this point A and this point B for convenience. I can do this either way, but I'm going to start by taking the sum of the moments about A. So that sum of the moments has to be equal to zero in the end, and it's equal to, uh, I get 1583.33 was the moment we came up with uh, from before when we found that distance. That this moment is negative because it's clockwise, and I have a positive moment from B. So that moment at B has to be the F sub B times the distance, which is uh, 12 meters. And I can solve for F sub B, and I get... 131.9 newtons. So to get the reaction at A, I'm going to do the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero, equals I've got the negative 250 newtons from downward. I've got my reaction at B plus 131.9 plus the reaction force at A, which we're finding F A and that leads me to F A equals 118.1 newtons. That ends this example, fairly quick one. And we'll again, we'll, we'll use this one. I think it'll be a good one for looking at the um, internal forces on this beam, the bending moment and shear in a later example. Thanks for watching and catch you on the flip side.